Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino live from the Battery for Season 4. And you know what? Uh, this is going to be a feel-good episode. Oh, I don't know, man. Some of the things that Chef was telling me, I think this might be a doom and gloom dystopia. Well, I think for us, we're going botched- to feel, feel good afterwards. Uh, I, I hope so, uh, man. We Honestly, there are a few things in life that we've botched more than what the concept of capitalism has done to the food that we eat. Um, so... Trip, you today. Your job is to keep this positive because this right. is not one that I, I, I do. I am not very, very pe- optimistic about the future of how this is all going. And I believe that a lot of the problems from Alzheimer's to a lot of these issues that have come up with diabetes have been made by the choices that we have made as a culture to put profits ahead of actually taking care but of people. But I also think the choices are because we're not educated, and so that's part of what today is about. There's is the optimist. Talk, There's yeah. the <laughs> learning and talking about there the positives go. in the choices we make around our foods. Well, and we have an expert. Yes, hopefully you and, and Chef Boyan Tregojevic. Thank that? You. Yes. Can can sway me because I'm, I'm going to be negative Nancy on this one, and it's not in my persona to be that way. But I'm going to be negative Nancy. So um, why don't you enjoy introduce Chef while I calm down a little bit? Yeah. So uh, Chef Boyan is um, runs Holistic Chefs of America, and uh, you're based here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And so yes. why don't you give us a little bit first? St- start with your background. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up, and uh, and then we'll get into um, Holistic Chefs of America. Well, thank you for having me here. It's it's a real honor to be here um well i started uh, i was born in serbia uh and um i grew up uh, on a self-sustaining farm with my grandparents um and so we had cows we had chickens we had pigs we had uh you know my grandma had a big garden so everything was self-sustaining you know if we were raising corn it was for the cows it was for the chickens and for the pigs and uh lamb we even had uh, uh, for a couple of years we had a lot of rabbits and oh man i really don't want to have any more rabbit <laughs> i i had a rabbit going out of my ears like because they're so gamey you yeah. know because they eat a lot of grass yeah. Um, so yes, uh, uh, you know, Grandma would uh, milk the cows. Then uh, she would make unchurned butter. Uh, she would make uh, feta from scratch. All of that. So like all of the milk products. Uh, also, how you preserve the meat. How you uh, preserve um, even fruits and vegetables. And you know, it, it's all passed down generationally. So that's where that's where the beginning was. Mm-hmm. But I came to Los Angeles when I was 13 years old, and I was in a restaurant since I was 16 and 32 years later yeah, I've been to like 67 so restaurants so Serbia to Los Angeles so yes. cu- culture wow. shock I mean if they I don't even know a more extreme word than that but I can only imagine um, so I think you know Serbia recently and a lot of this is to do with the import of like NBA players it is it is yes. people talking about Serbia it is a country good Jokic and even Slovenia the, the people are talking about this part of the world but I think when you say 30 years ago it was pretty much unknown. Serbia was unknown to the United yes, States. Yes, we were America. part of Yugoslavia. So and then you moved why. Yeah. to Los Angeles. Yes. To, to Hollywood. So to talk about the restaurants you started there and what was the first culture shock like coming to LA? Well, we Yugoslavia was uh, on the western side of the eastern bloc. That's the best way to put it. So we had open borders. Mm-hmm. So which means that we were all pro Hollywood. We were pro America anyway. No one speaks more English than in Serbia. Right now you can just go there and speak English. Got it. So it wasn't that much of a culture shock. I already knew where I wanted to be. And and I was working for Bud Yorkin and Cynthia Sykes, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, uh, in fact, I was supposed to work for Arnold Schwarzenegger as well in Hollywood uh, and, and uh, Beverly Hills, uh, that entire. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't so much of a culture shock uh, because we, you know, we speak English. We, you know, as a, as a second language, uh, you know, Russian too. I, I know it's confusing, but we speak multiple languages. No, you in said Europe. you were closer to Europe, so you were yes. more on the free border yes. side. Yes. You were not yes. on the western yes. side where yes. they were sitting there and they were yes. they were starting to run the propaganda campaigns. The, you saw the side the of culture, the real side. The culture yeah. shock was for me when I was going through. Uh, uh, junior, junior high school and high school, when you you have your lunch and you're like looking at it like, is this lunch in America? Right. You know, like the healthiest thing is is this apple that yeah. hardly looks like an apple, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's yeah. been sprayed with like 23 right. different pesticides. You're watching pesticides. like a TV dinner, yeah. watching yeah. these people put it in a microwave. Yeah, and like that. That, 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 that was fair. an amazing, uh, like, the wow. This school is what you system do. is another issue. You and I were in, actually in LA at the same time, so I lived out there with my first. Uh, 
a career job, and I used to, uh, um, we had the paper contract for um, the L.A. school district. So I spent, oh, uh, yeah. Yes, well, that's where I went there. to school. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. you go. And then, um, and then I was there during the riots and all. But tell me. Me so, too. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me during that period where you did start to work in a restaurant. I mean, L.A., I think the beauty of it is there's a lot of different ethnic pockets. How yes. Did, did I that it. help you find your first job or how did that first job start out? You know, I was dishwasher and making sandwiches at 16, okay. you know, still going to high school. And uh, yeah, uh, Los Angeles back in the day was really an amazing place, right? Because yeah. you had little Ethiopia, you have Koreatown. Yeah. That was Koreatown. I, okay. I was in Koreatown. Yeah. I was well. Long Beach, yeah. but, yeah, Long but Beach I guess Koreatown's Koreatown's changed up there. quite a bit, but yeah. it's still there. It's, yeah. still, it's, yeah. still, it's, still, it's well, still there. It's trendy now. It's not the way it was. It's yeah. now. <laughs> but that's anywhere. I mean, Queens used to be, there were neighborhoods where I grew up in Astoria was all Greeks and Russians. Now yeah. it's $4,000 a month for a 600 yeah. square foot apartment. Who's living there now? It's yeah. changed very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, going from different restaurants, uh, like today, I'm just looking in retrospect, like there is hardly anything original in restaurants these days because they're only right. they're spinning the same thing. You know, they, you know what I mean? It's like the same. It's like what sauces are you going to put on your chicken wings? Right. right. You know, ranch. Yeah. Well, they have yeah. lemon pepper and they lemon have pepper. hot sauce. Uh, Let's just call it hot lemon I mean, pepper. Hot oh lemon pepper. Or barbecue. Or whatever. Yeah, something right. new. Or, yeah, so, so, hot, so, so what is your first big break? So you started out, you know, the back of the house, uh, dishwashing, et cetera. What was your first break and how did that happen? Uh, it was in a small restaurant, uh, um, it, uh, Portofino uh, and Italian restaurant. It was, uh, uh, you know, an Italian chef who basically just took a chance on me. It's like uh, sometimes you you get to see into in a cook like they're hungry, they want right. to learn, they don't necessarily want to go to Le Cordon Bleu or yep. those other places and yep. pay forty thousand and be you know stuck to learn theory. Yeah, to learn to theory. You know. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's how it started. Uh, but for me, it never stopped. Meaning, I went into you know, just the, not just Italian but French, but then. It never stopped, really. I, I went into Japanese. I, I was a hibachi chef. I did, you know, I was, uh, I managed Kuroshio Sushi Bar and Grill here in Kennesaw. So I needed to learn everything about everything. Um, and uh, the real, uh, I think, the real learning experience is like you don't you don't want to stop you want to learn when it comes to cooking you want to learn and you're constantly learning uh, but there's so many different cuisines all over the world that are really healthy you know you don't need to go vegan to be healthy um, but you just you need to follow the classics yeah you know there's so much Indian right. food there's yeah. so much Pakistani and there's, and there's vegetarian vegetarian Indian, Indian yes. restaurants all over the place it's one yeah. of the most you know what one of the things and I I completely agree with you and I think one of the problems is people think they still they think just because they're vegan they're healthy yeah. It's like, no, not if yeah. you eat 64 handfuls of peanuts, they still are super high in fat. That doesn't make you healthy. Or Everything is about balance. And I think it's one of the, again, capitalism and the way we cook food doesn't lead to balance because it wants you to eat chips because they're made to be addicting with salt yes. content and oils. They're made we to, gotta sell you to something. sell more chips. Yes, right. we got to sell you something. But that we got to like... We gotta have, uh, we gotta understand the difference from what's across uh, the ocean. Like what's going on in Europe? Sure. Right. How is EU? How are how are the 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 politicians in EU protecting their yeah. public? I mean, yellow, and what's yellow, going on? Yellow here? Five has been illegal. Yellow Five is a great example as a food coloring that they have tied to. I believe it's autism, but they've tied it to many things, and they are still in this country. We are still putting it out like it's nothing. We have drinks that have pretty much antifreeze inside of that we're yes. serving to yeah. people. EU has blocked a lot of that stuff, and I understand. That they've done it but again where is the it's not there's no public outcry it's, it's no, collusion well, it's basically welcome, it's collusion it's, democracy. Those it's, are it's very simple you know so it's money we're getting ahead of ourselves so <laughs> you talk about it because you you look on here march against monsanto you've been a holistic chef talk about the qualifications that have allowed you to get there because in the middle segment we're going to really dive into this yeah. and what this means and how to change your own personal but talk about why you became interested in this you know obviously the farm well, helped but why you became interested and well, what you've done to make yourself uh, more knowledgeable on the topic my son who is here nikola trigovich uh, he's 13 years old uh, he's been dealing with autism since he was two years old so it's because of that that I dove into why. 
that's when I started mm-hmm. to watch uh, Food Incorporated, Food Matters, Forks Over Knives, Food Fight, uh, and Genetic Roulette, as well as uh, What the Health uh, by Joaquin Phoenix. I think that documentary goes a little bit too far because it's all about vegan and, yeah. and such. Mm-hmm. But uh, all of those documentaries opened my eyes, uh, and then I became an activist with March Against Monsanto Atlanta, and subsequently now I'm president of March Against Monsanto Atlanta. Yeah, and I think everyone gets complicated, but some of these things are really simple, right? We have made a mistake to believe in this country that McDonald's is cheap food, so it is the food people eat, okay? But if you actually have a concept, rice, lentils, and spinach, if you mix those things together and eat that, you will not only be incredibly healthy, you will be filled, you will be probably brighter because it helps the brain, and those are really inexpensive things. Lentils are one of the cheapest, best for you things on earth, but there's no education about that. Yeah, well, uh, the other thing I want to say is that we are disconnected from, you see, I was fortunate to be raised by my grandparents. Mm-hmm. We are, in America, we're disconnected from our parents and our grandparents, right? And our grand right. The lineage. The lineage. So we're not taught that this is what you need to do to, let's say, raise your strawberries. You know, that's, that shouldn't be difficult. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's the reason why. It's like we're divided completely yeah. from our mothers and, 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 and our uh, grandmothers. And, 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 and cooking is a family event. It's yes. not it existence. I mean, it is, you know, whistle, get them off the Game Boys and everything else, and um, come time, sit down for dinner, and then it's just placed in front of you. If you're even cooking, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I think it's the further devo- the separated you are from your lineage. So yes. my mother was born in Florence. And my parents were both close, pretty close to immigrants. So I was connected to that legacy. Everything was cooked. My grandma's 99 years old and still gardens and has her figs and does <laughs> yeah. her stuff by herself. And there was very little, there was very little but, fluff be, being put into the food. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think uh, we want to hit that a little bit more when we uh, get back from the break. So we'll kind of kind of dive into that and, yep. and some of the examples and get into uh, again holistic we'll chefs advice, of America. Man. Let's give some people some advice I know. how to fix it themselves too because we need we need some it, help. Absolutely. So you've been listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3, and we'll be right back.